Large language models contain the entirety of human knowledge. How incredible is that? So what do you usually think about when you think about preparing for the end of the world or even preppers in general? You probably think about somebody underground, tons of cans of food, water, but what about knowledge? How to build engines, how to make antibiotics and other medicine, multiple ways to generate energy. And if the worst happens, do you think you'd be able to help rebuild society from scratch? So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to store and secure the entirety of human knowledge in your own home. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to choose a model, how to download the model, how to store it securely, how to run inference on it, and how to build in redundancy to all of these technologies. So stick around for the tutorial. Large language models are essentially extremely compressed versions of the entire internet, books, articles, anything that humans have written are compressed down into a large language model. And some of these small and efficient large language models are just a few gigabytes in size and can be run on pretty low end computers. No matter how many times I think about that, it still blows my mind. And so if the worst happens, how do we actually protect that knowledge? And if you're not familiar with the story of the Library of Alexandria, it was essentially the central repository for all knowledge and all documents. And one day it was accidentally burned down and many believe that humanity was greatly set back by that event. But now, of course, in the modern world, our information, our knowledge has incredible redundancy between physical copies of books, the internet, which is distributed all through the world, local disk drives, but there are limitations to all of that. So first, what am I actually talking about? What are these scenarios that are the end of the world? I'm being a bit tongue in cheek and saying the end of the world, but let's actually talk about the specifics. I'm not a doomsday person by any means, but I still think it's fun to think about these things and to prepare for them. And not only that, it's actually super easy. It doesn't take a lot of time or money. So first, let's talk about either a temporary or permanent internet outage. Now, if you're relying on cloud-based models like ChatGPT or Anthropic, then you are completely dependent on having an internet connection. Now, what if your internet connection goes down temporarily and you need an answer right away? And I'm not even talking about storing this information in the long term. Let's say your internet goes out in your neighborhood for six hours and you have a desperate question that you need to ask and you have no other way to ask it. Well, in this case, this is a great example of when an open source large language model that you can run locally on your computer with no internet connection comes in handy. And what about a permanent internet outage? Now we're really thinking about doomsday scenarios. Let's say for whatever reason, however it happens, the internet goes out and there's no way to bring it back up. Again, you have no way to access artificial intelligence or the internet, and thus you've lost access to so much information. And then what if the government decides to either partially or fully restrict artificial intelligence? All of a sudden, you're not going to be able to access large language models, and I bet you'd gain a lot of value from at least having a large language model locally in your house. What if you have no power? How are you going to handle that situation? And what if there are severe solar flares or other types of interference that can mess with your computer, that can mess with a electronics? How are you going to protect yourself against those scenarios? So all you're really going to need are three things. You're going to need a way to store your data. You're going to need a computer to actually run the software and the inference. And then you're going to need a power source to power it all. That's it. Just those three things. And we'll dive into more detail about those three things in a little bit. Next, let's talk about the large language models themselves. What I am suggesting is that you download an open source large language model and store it in your house somewhere. And the way that I've done that is on this little drive right here. I've downloaded the latest and greatest large language model and I have it on here. In fact, it only took a fraction of the total storage available on this drive. Now this is a solid state drive and I'll talk more about the different drive options in a little bit. But how do you decide which model to choose? Well, Here's what you're gonna think about. First, you wanna choose the latest and greatest models. Large language models are advancing at breakneck speed. And so what is the best today will be old news even a month from now. And what that means is better, more accurate, more efficient models that you can run on lower and lower grade hardware. So you always wanna choose whatever the latest and greatest model is. You also wanna choose the largest model that you can run on your computer. Whatever computer you have, choose the largest model that you can fit on there and actually run. And I'm gonna show you how to determine that in a little bit. And not only do you want the largest 
Aegis model, but most likely you're going to want a quantized model. You get a very minimal reduction in quality, but you get a big reduction in size and a great increase in performance. And then last, you definitely want an uncensored model, mainly because when it comes down to it in an emergency situation, the last thing that you want is for your large language model to refuse your request. For example, in the worst case where you're having to rebuild society from scratch and you get to the point where you need to build a nuclear reactor, you probably don't want your model refusing that request. And it's understandable why the model would want to refuse that request because it could be very dangerous. But again, we're thinking about worst case scenarios here. And once you've chosen a model, how do you actually run it? Well, I'm gonna give you three options. First, and probably my most recommended, just because it's the easiest to use, is LM Studio. It has a graphical user interface. You can download models directly from it. You actually have the chat interface directly from there as well. It's dead simple, especially for beginners. Olama is another fantastic option. There's no user interface, but if you just want the raw power of your large language model, that is a great option. But it does take a little bit Bit more know-how to get it working. And then there's TextGen Web UI, which is another fantastic option. There is an interface, it's not super easy to use, but it's well documented and there are plenty of ways to learn how to use it well. Now let's talk about storage. How are we actually going to store this information, both the large language model and the software to actually run it? Well, first, Install both on your computer. Whatever computer you're using for this backup, install it there. But not only that, you're gonna wanna install it on some kind of external drive. Now again, I chose this little solid state drive, but there are some definite deficiencies with choosing an SSD. First, it is super fast, but it has a very short life. I've read that we're talking about five years. And that's not much if you're thinking about storing this for the long term. So if you're gonna choose an SSD, which I did, cause that's what I have, make sure that you're replacing it every few years. Another option is kind of old school on a tape. And these are drives, you can still find them. They store massive amounts of information, except they are quite slow. And they last for about 10 to 15 years, but it seems the best option might be Blu-ray, which is kind of interesting. It is definitely on the slower side, but it can store a lot of information because you can have multiple disks and the disks themselves, as long as you're not scratching them up, last 30 to 50 years. Now let's even take it a step further. How do we actually protect those drives? Well, first let's think about how to protect it from fire. I bought a fireproof safe. You can get them on Amazon quite cheap nowadays. And the contents of the safe can survive in a fire up to something like 45 minutes. So make sure you buy a fireproof safe to put the computer and the disk drives. Now, what about interference? Whether you're talking about solar flares or protecting a computer from hacking or any other type of signal interference. Well, there's something called a Faraday bag and I actually bought one from Amazon. Here it is. It is extremely cheap. I think this one was 20 bucks and it's large. You put whatever you want protected from the signal directly in here, the laptop, the hard drive, and then you close it up and you're done. And it is protected from all signals. And then last is moisture. And that's super simple. You just get a few desiccants and you throw it in the safe and it keeps it really dry in there. But now let me show you how to actually do this installation. So I'm going to show you how to do it with LM Studio because I did find that to be easiest. So you're going to go to lmstudio.ai. You're going to download the version that is for your operating system. And they do have Mac, Windows, and Linux in beta. So I downloaded the Mac version. Now here's the important part. You're going to want to download it to your external drive. You don't have to at first, but I like doing it that way because now I know it's stored externally. And when I download a model, I know it'll be on that drive. So I'm going to go ahead and download it right now. Now, once you're done downloading LM Studio, go ahead and double click the installation file. And then instead of dragging this over to applications, we're going to drag it all the way over to our external drive and drag it right there. Now, once you open it up, this is what it looks like. It's a very simple interface. I made an entire tutorial going over how to use this, so be sure to check it out. I'll drop the link to that in the description below. And right here is where you're gonna search for your models. This is the large language model that you wanna download. Now, as mentioned, you wanna download the latest and greatest and the biggest model that your computer can support. And the good thing about LM Studio is it actually tells you which models are gonna run well on your computer. Now, I personally think the Mixtral model is best, so that's the one we're gonna download, but we want it uncensored, so we're gonna download the Dolphin version of it, and that is a fine-tuned version by Eric Hartford that removes censorship. So we go ahead and hit enter, 
And the one I'm going to download is right here, Dolphin 2.7 Mixtral 8x7B. It is a very large model. It is 30 plus gigabytes, but I can run it on my computer. All you have to do to make sure is just look right here where it says should work. And that means any of these versions should work. Now the ones that are grayed out, it doesn't recommend. And the ones that are highlighted are the recommended ones. So I would download this Q5KM version, 32 gigabytes. So go ahead and download it. Just click on it. The little blue bar comes up on the bottom. We'll open it up and then we can watch it download right here. Now I've already downloaded it, so I'm not gonna finish the download right now. So once you have that model downloaded, you actually wanna make sure you know where it is. And if it's not on your external drive, go ahead and put it there. And you can actually see where your local models are stored right here on this tab. So if you click on this little folder tab on the left, and then you look at local models folder, this is where it's storing the local models. And of course you can change the location, but if your local model folder is not your external drive, make sure you change it to that and make sure that is where you're storing your local models. Now we go over to the chat tab and we're just gonna load it up and make sure it works. So we have Apple Metal turned on because I have a Mac. Then I'm gonna select this and we're gonna load up Laser Dolphin. And there we go. Let's just give it a quick test. How do I build a fire using sticks? And here we go. Perfect, it's telling me. Gather the necessary materials, prepare the fireboard, create a notch create a hearth. So now I will always know how to create fire. Although of course you actually have to have the skill to do it, but that's another story. And so that's it for this part. You know how to install LM Studio on an external drive. You know how to choose and download the right model and store that one on the external drive. And now you know how to load it up and run inference. Super easy. Next, let's talk about a couple more things. What if you have a loss of power? You're gonna need power to power the computer to run the inference. So first you can have a battery backup. And if you watched my recent mobile Aloha video, you saw that that robot, not just the computer, but the entire robot was using a mobile backup battery. And so I actually found this battery. It stores 1200 watt hours of power. It's definitely not cheap. I think it's about 600, $700, but you can get a much smaller one and still be fine. Then you could also consider getting solar for your roof or a diesel or gas generator. And last, how do you maintain all of this? Well, you're going to want the latest and greatest models. Make sure that whenever a new model comes out, you download it to that external drive the same way I just showed you. You're also going to want to keep your software up to date, which I've been a little bit guilty of letting lag. So spin up that computer, get LM Studio running, download the latest updates. And then you're always going to want to check your battery health because Keeping batteries at 100% charge degrades the battery more quickly than keeping less, but you do want to keep full charge on that battery. So just make sure you're checking the battery's health. And that's it. Now you have the entirety of human knowledge on a single tiny backup drive that you can store in a fireproof safe in case of any type of emergency situation. I'm sure there are even better ways to do it. If you can think of better ways, either to protect the drive, protect the computer, get a better model, let me know in the comments below. And if you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.